I'm Zoe Hardman and as always we are live from London. Today I am absolutely thrilled to be welcoming two activists for body positivity and confidence here to tell us how stripping off in the sunshine for Channel 4's Naked Beach can help with your self-esteem. Please put your hands together and welcome Felicity Hayward and Natasha Devon. <laughs> Lovely ladies are here. Now, if you'd like to get involved and ask the guys a question, we'd love to hear from you. As always, you can tweet us at Build Series London or you can leave a comment below this video if you're watching live on Facebook. Ladies, hello, welcome. Hi, babes. Hi, babes. Are you all right? You guys feeling good? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. Um, first up, let's talk about the concept of Naked Beach. Um, just tell us a little bit about the show. Well, it was a concept that um, I came up with with a guy called Dr. Keon West, who works at Goldsmiths University. And his research shows that if you spend time around a really diverse range of naked bodies with everything on show, the things we don't normally see, like scars and stretch marks and moles and all that stuff, then it actually improves your body image. And it's, if you think about it, the, the world that we inhabit right now, we see the exact opposite of that. Everything is photoshopped and filtered and airbrushed. And we know that has a negative impact. So it's essentially just taking that and flipping it on its head. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's, oh, it's a, there you are, look! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it does look really, really fun, but can we just kind of tackle the kind of issue behind it? Because, you know, it is it is such a huge thing that's going on in the UK at the moment. We do seem to be coming across lots of people with uh, body problems, body confidence issues. So, you know, w w how do we kind of, I guess, make them better? Well, I guess if you're in a position of power um, or influence online, you should use it for good. So, for example, if, you know, I'm a model and there are photos of me online that have been photoshopped or edited, but they're completely out of my control, you know, for example, campaigns. And what we need to do is we need to have people that are showing their stretch marks, showing their moles, showing everything and showing real life. Uh, uh, I guess, like, do you have any control over that? Because you're saying that it's out of your control, but as a as a uh, plus size model, can you not say to the brand, do you know what, I'm only going to model for you if you don't airbrush me? You can say that for sure, but it's sometimes that doesn't even matter. The people above will just do what they want to the images. That's really yeah. shocking. So even if we all kind of got together and said, right, we're not going to do this unless, because I hate airbrushing. I've, yeah. got a real, I've got a real issue with it. But are you saying that they just wouldn't listen or it's not what they want to, to, to kind of portray? I mean, some brands I, I know are doing like no Photoshop. And I did a campaign with a certain brand last year that showed all of our scars and all of our stretch marks. And it did so well, mm. so well. But I mean, it's until like the people like higher up in fashion want to make a change and realise that there's not just one type of body image, that we're ever going to be able to have that change. Mm. Uh, and Natasha, how much do you think social media is compounding the issue? Because it seems like we actually can't showcase the real us, us because of you know face tuning and filters. It's really fashionable to blame social media for all of society's ills. Um, these kinds of body insecurities have existed for a, a long, long time. And you know, m most of my work is in schools and colleges. I work with teenagers. And what I say to them is, social media actually gives you a luxury that I didn't have when I was your age, which is to be able to find people who represent something a little bit different. When I was their age, I only had fashion magazines. That was my only access into that kind of glamorous world that you, that you crave and want to be part of but now we have all these people who you know like felicity are breaking the mold are being bold are representing something a bit different and you know we said earlier didn't we you don't have to follow the kardashians it's not <laughs> mandatory you can create your own social silo online and fill it with positivity I mean, my favourite is when um, people go in and go, look, I just want to achieve that really natural Kim Kardashian look with my <laughs> makeup. It's like, I mean, hilarious. No, that's, she has yeah. a nutritionist, she has a personal trainer, and then she sits there going like, oh, this slimming tea is really going to change you. You're going to lose so much weight. 
I don't don't even get me no. started on the slimming. Test. Don't even <laughs> all the lollipops. No, don't. We can't. <laughs> now listen. Um, recently there was a survey that was out, and a, a kind of whopping ninety percent of teenagers said that they had an ima an, an issue with their image um, and their bodies. This is a huge statistic. So what can we do to really get to the heart of of the youth of today? Well, I think two things need to happen. First of all, we need to see more diversity. I think we've been far too binary in our thinking in the past because there's been such a kind of consensus that everything needs to be super slender, you know, all through the 80s and 90s. We got into the early 2000s and suddenly we had plus size models and everyone went, woo. But we have to remember that not everybody's plus size. There's all kinds of evolutionary reasons why human beings are very, very different from each other. So what we need to see are lots of shapes and sizes like you see in that picture next to each other. But I also think that we need to maybe take the, the focus a little bit off of our bodies as well. And um, I don't know if you've heard of the Slum Flower. Um, she's huge on the internet, one of the influencers. And yep. she has this um, saying, she calls the body the spirit sack. And I love that. The it's spirit just, sack. Just what you're carrying your spirit <laughs> around in. It doesn't actually matter that much. Now let's talk about the show, The Naked, uh, well, Naked Beach yep. on Channel 4 this evening. How does the show kind of tackle those um, body image issues? And what was the transformation that you saw from start to finish? Well, I mean, they walk to the villa and we're standing there like that. <laughs> so I would love <laughs> to see that. I, I'm sad you haven't come dressed in your, in your paint today. Oh, it's been a long day, babes. <laughs> Yeah, it's a task sometimes to keep this one clothed, so don't tempt her. We were all, we were all looking forward to it, weren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah everyone was. Not today, hun. Um, it was an amazing journey because you see the contributors when they, when they arrive and they absolutely panic. I mean, would you panic? Would you panic? Everyone's nodding. Not you at the back, I like you. <laughs> um, yeah, they absolutely just kind of panicked because they were the first thing was like, oh my God, I can't do this, I can't be naked. And, mm. and actually you go through the show and you get to see each individual story. And you know, one person might want to be fully naked and that's what they're insecure about, but someone else, it might be not wearing any makeup. So the idea of being naked is different for each person. Are you naked when you go to a beach? <laughs> not <laughs> well. <laughs> not normally. If it, it, say that again. Not normally. Not normally. No. But if it's nudist beach, you're like that. Oh yeah, of course. Mm. Don't want to get myself in trouble. <laughs> no, it's fine. You're, you're in a safe zone here. Uh, <laughs> should we take a look at the show? We've got a clip. Oh yes, Have please. You? Yes, yeah. Please. Brilliant. Not even seen that. Absolutely fantastic. I oh, love it. I just and even that image there. It just, it makes me so happy. Me too. I think that's what utopia looks like. I completely agree with you. <laughs> um, I mean, getting people that um, don't have an issue with their bodies to strip off, you know, must be quite difficult. But how on earth did you do it with people that actually have body insecurities? Well, I mean, the first thing about the experiment is that it's immersive. So we took them to a completely different environment so they could literally let go of all the routines and the familiarities of home and some of the things that might have been holding them back. And we immersed them in an environment where not only is everyone naked, but all of these people are incredibly positive. And they were almost kind of bombarding them with this po positivity. They didn't allow them to feel bad about themselves mm. or use any kind of self-bashing rhetoric. And the second thing that we did is... Um, I had a chat with all of the contributors before the show and found out a little bit about their backstory and what had brought them to this point. And we designed activities specifically for each guest um, to get them back in tune with, with their bodies and, and the things that bring them joy. Okay, that's so interesting, isn't it? Because the body should bring you joy. It's what we're walking around with. So you've got to get on with it and you've got to love it. Yeah, and well, I think may, perhaps for some people, loving it feels like too much of a big step. But I, I always say what we should be aiming for is neutrality. We should be aiming to not hate our bodies, you know, because from our earliest moments, we are indoctrinated into this belief system that tells us that our body is our enemy and we should constantly be fighting it. But, you know, we're, we're alive mm. and that's something to be celebrated. Do you know what? I had a bit of that after I had my second baby. I stood in front of the mirror and I still looked seven months pregnant, but there was no baby in there. And I... The, 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 the little devil that sits on the side of the shoulder was going, oh my gosh, look at your body. Oh, look, it looks awful. And it looks. And then I suddenly thought, do you know what? My body is just 
carried a baby yeah. for nearly 10 months. And it was in that moment that I thought, I'm not going to let any of those demons come in, but they can creep back in and they can be quite scary. Mm. You know, like, yeah, I guess you're a plus size model. Um, what kind of knowledge did you impart onto the, onto the contributors? I just kind of made sure that they understood that, you know, the perfect body does not exist because there's no two people on this planet that are the same. So you have to aspire to be the best version of yourself mm. and not someone else. And I guess, you know, once you kind of find and you understand that, you're going to start to develop self-love within yourself. Mm. And self-love isn't something that's going to just you know, you're going to have half an hour with us, four days with us, and you're instantly going to be cured. But you are going to, ha you do have to make a change within yourself and just have, po just have positive thinking, really. Mm. And my million pound idea is I think that we should have action figures <laughs> of the host that say things like that, that you can just keep with you at all times. Because this is obviously the key to body confidence is just having Felicity with you all the time. In fact, can I hire you? Yeah, just I Just to want, follow you I me around. Felicity I mean, I me. like hanging out with you. We hang out all day. <laughs> How dramatic did you see um, the transformations um, with, the, with the guys on the show? Like what sort of changes did they go through from start to finish? It, it's really interesting. It, I mean, it's exactly like Felicity said that um, it, it depends on the context of the person um, as to, uh, you know, how insecure they were feeling at the beginning and, and what stripping, you know, meant to them. But you do see these changes in, for example, their, their body language and their facial expression um, as the show goes on. And, and that was a really interesting thing for me to see, actually, you know, having overseen the, the entire thing and, and seeing the process from beginning to end. When I actually sat down and watched the show, it was really wonderful to see. It was almost like a flower mm. opening and, and blossoming. It was really amazing we've actually got a clip of all that positivity so i want to take a look at it so i can radiate off it <laughs> just yeah. absolutely brilliant really just stripping bare and just going for it it's so lovely to see i mean she just forgot she had a bikini on like she hadn't worn a bikini ever i don't mm. think it's magic and when you see Kay at the beginning and where she's come from, that will become even more astonishing. And that's why everyone should watch tonight at eight o'clock on Channel 4. <laughs> <laughs> and well done. I like that from you. Um, what was the idea behind all of the body painting and how long did it take uh, from start to finish? Mm, about two to three hours every morning. No way. Um, I mean, it wasn't the morning that was so much the issue. It, it was at night time when we had to get it off. Oh, surely you just sleep in it. <laughs> There must be one with the paint. The laundry bill was <laughs> was crazy. Um, yeah, it did take about two hours every morning, but we had an amazing, amazing body paint crew. And every episode, we we kind of got to decide if we had a theme, so an animal print. I wanted animal to print. Be. Obviously, it was, I was big. Like, this one's for me, yeah. babes. What, what was the idea behind it, though? Behind the body paint. Yeah. Well, the idea was that um, we didn't want the, the show to be about genitals. It's not a genital-centric concept. <laughs> um, it's, it's about... I genuinely didn't think <laughs> you were going to say that on the show today. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, but, you know, it's, it's more about shape and seeing how bodies move. And, and ultimately, you know what? It's a family show. It's on at 8 o'clock. The idea is that families can watch it together and it's going to promote discussion. So it, um, the, the idea behind the body paint was that they could be fully naked, but the focus wouldn't be on the rude bits. On all the rude bits. Mm. If that was a cat suit, though, I would wear it. You <laughs> look <Honestly. me> fabulous. <laughs> um, Felicity, we've obviously spoken about you being a model. Do you still face criticism online? And if so, how do you deal with it? I mean, every day, babes. Uh, it makes me so angry. Uh, it's just so stupid. And I think the problem is, is I get a lot, a lot of hate online. I mean, it's going to get even worse this evening. But the thing is, the people that push all of this hate, they're coming from a place of insecurity themselves. Yeah. So they're coming to me because they don't understand how I can be curvy and have this figure and have stretch marks and not care and just be, yeah, this is me, I'm amazing, I look great and you can't stop me. Now, for a hundred negative comments I could get, if I get one good from a young girl or boy that's inspired them to maybe show a bit more flesh or wear a certain outfit, it overrides all of them. Mm. Zoe, do you get hate online? 
Um, yeah, but I just don't read it. I laugh at them because I really don't care what but anyone says. But so do I. And I'm thinking there's three women, three very different body types. I think it's just being a woman yeah. who dares to like herself a bit <laughs> yeah. online. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that I don't think how you look objectively has anything to do with it. I think it's people are very threatened by the idea. I, I think that if you took, you know, if, if you, in your mind, if you think, right, I'm going to send some hate now, if you step back and said, you know what, I'm going to send some love instead, mm. you would get so much more of an incredible feeling feeling running through mm. your body than all of the anger that's what I'm trying to promote yeah I like it send the love don't send the hate <laughs> do, do you have a comment that you say back to people say say if someone says to you oh you're you're glamorizing obesity by being a plus size model do you have any do you, or would you just ignore? Do you know what? most of the time I ignore them because it's just really draining and boring it's sometimes when people just write under like my picture you are fat and sometimes I reply, the only thing fat about me, darling, is my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> I love that! So, oh sometimes, sometimes I like to, like, it's only a very sly comment. And then I just let battle commence and everyone else goes in. Well done. So, That's But you know, you know what it really comes across in the show as well, actually, is that people who love their bodies make naturally healthier choices. Mm -hmm. They will want to be active more. They will listen to their hunger cues. They'll probably reach for the foods that their body needs. But all this idea that body confidence and health are at odds with each other is a completely false dichotomy that has been, I think, created by the health trolls, you know? You know how everyone on Twitter is a doctor? Oh, yeah. And they or an look expert. at you and tell exactly, you're going to die of diabetes in six months. They, they know somehow, magically. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Everyone's got a comment on it. Everyone's got an opinion on it. Um, I guess, you know, Naked Beach is a really positive show. So I want to know your top tips for anybody that's struggling with body confidence issues. One of the things that it really helped me to know is... Um, there's something that we do when we look in the mirror. It's called compartmentalization. And what it means is we divide our body into chunks and we zoom in on our least favorite parts. So our flaws become magnified, they become much bigger in our minds than they, they are in reality. When someone else looks at us, they look at our face first and foremost, and then they take in our bodies as a whole. So our flaws don't seem as, as big to them. So at, at my thing would be, no one's looking at you, at least not in the same way as you look at yourself. Mm. And what about if you're being, let's keep it, you know, a little bit clean. If you're being intimate with a man and you're concerned about how you look, um, not you, because I know you're not, I but mean, what would you say? <laughs> you love it. But what, what, would you, what advice would you give anybody that's struggling with that? Because obviously being intimate and getting naked in front of somebody is a big deal. I mean... If they don't love you and like the way you look, you shouldn't be with them. Do you know what I mean? They are. If you're naked with them, they are lucky. Exactly. And they should know that. Yeah. <laughs> so keep the lights on. Uh, listen, we have got a social question. Amy from London on Twitter. Thank you both for all the amazing work that you're doing. I am a UK size 18, but I feel I'm healthy. Is it possible to be fit and fat? Yeah, of course yeah. it is. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the, so scientifically, the, there is no direct causal link between fat and disease. So it, it, saying that being fat causes disease is like saying yellow teeth cause lung cancer. There's something that you're doing that can cause yellow teeth and lung cancer. If you sit on your bum all day and eat lard, that's never going to be good for you. <laughs> that's not a good diet, is yeah. it? No. However, there's, you know, because we, we are genetically very diverse, and that's a good thing because it means that our species is going to survive, hopefully, for a long time, we are meant to be different shapes and sizes. So as long as you're doing the things that you know you're supposed to be doing, eating your fruit and veg, staying active, your body looks exactly as it is supposed to look because health is a lifestyle. It's, it's not a look. And we need to let go of that idea that you can visually assess someone that way. Listen, ladies, we are very excited about the show tonight. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, episode one of the ne of Naked Beach is on tonight, Channel 4 at 8pm, and there will be nudity, so get ready for it. Uh, but that is all from, for us. We're going to be back next week with loads more interviews here at Build Series London. But for now, please put your hands together and say thank you so much to Felicity and Natasha. <laughs>